King raised with respect to violence mm -hmm. and human destruction. You know, that's why we always return to that 1997 interview that uh, mm -hmm. no matter when you listen to that, you can listen to it in 2005. Yeah. It still yeah. seems as if it, it was done yesterday primarily because of that timelessness that you're talking about. Exactly. And of course, Dr. Ball, we're going to have to take our second commercial break, mm -hmm. and after which we'll come back and give you an opportunity to close us out for the day. Mm -hmm. And we'll, in, we'll uh, see our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. The topic is Dr. Martin Luther King at the 21st century, and of course the guest is uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin from Vanderbilt University. Uh, Dr. Baldwin, during this last uh, segment, let's give you an opportunity to sort of inform mm -hmm. our audience in terms of some of the uh, things that you're thinking about in terms of Dr. Martin Luther King and how uh, Dr. King, the role that Dr. King has played in, 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 in what we're doing here today. Okay. I, I, one of the things that disturbed me today is that we have this tremendous tendency to celebrate the, the dreamer, the person of Dr. King, who he was. But we don't want, want to celebrate and affirm and pursue the fulfillment of his dream. dream. Okay. And I think that becomes very problematic uh, for me. Not only is that a problem, there's also the problem of certain uh, factions in our society trying to claim ownership to Dr. King's okay, dream. Very good. Uh, mm -hmm. I've heard people on the religious and political right mm -hmm. use Dr. King in their efforts to uh, promote what they call a pro-life mm -hmm. uh, culture, yeah. that is, against abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard people on the religious right use Dr. King against the gay rights movement. Mm -hmm. uh, they are trying to use Dr. King to promote conservative causes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you never hear anything about race, you never hear anything about economics, you mm -hmm. never hear anything about peace. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they have a very li limited perspective on Dr. King. I think there's the need today to recapture a sense of who Dr. King was, mm -hmm. what his dream was about, mm -hmm. and the kinds of uh, tactics and methods he employed in the pursuit of that dream, and of uh, the fulfillment of that particular dream. So uh, the problem today, I think, uh, adds up to a distortion of what Dr. King was, mm -hmm. what he was about. Uh, and in many cases, uh, we are too prone to celebrate the dreamer without celebrating the, the dream. dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. You the know, dream. Dr. Baldwin, uh, what we always try to do is to uh, have our guests to say something that would uh, be beneficial to uh, the young people. Because, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, not only would it be beneficial to the young people, but older mm -hmm. people as well. Yeah. But I think that you would admit that uh, we're having a real problem. Exactly. In terms of dealing with our young people and yeah. having them to focus on some of the things that are important, etc. Certainly, exactly. Dr. King would have some attitudes yeah. in reference to these pants that we are way, way people dress, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And so, well, why don't you speak? You know, what would be his talk, message today? His message to young people to young today people in terms today. of what they have to do. I think one of the one aspect of his message would be study hard. Uh, Dr. King was an intellectual. You may think of him as an activist, a civil rights leader. He was all of that, but he was also an intellectual mm -hmm. who took the academic life very seriously. And he, in his own speeches and letters to students, mm -hmm. he encouraged them to study hard. That's one thing he encouraged them to do. Secondly, to avoid too much obsession with materialistic okay, values. Very good. Because our young people are concerned about materialism, mm -hmm. uh, the price of clothes, mm -hmm. the price of our uh, sneakers, mm -hmm. uh, expensive clothes, expensive jewelry, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Dr. King was not about that. He mm -hmm. said that materialism is not, shouldn't be very, very important in our mm -hmm. lives. We all have things, we all want to own things, mm -hmm. but spiritual values are much more important. Mm -hmm. Moral values are much more important. We have to learn how to live in relationship to our fellow mm -hmm. uh, men and women. Uh, we have to learn how to make contributions, not to just the uplift of ourselves, but to, to the uplift of all mm -hmm. people. And we need to think in terms of the other. Mm -hmm. Dr. King often said that, that the first law of life is not self-preservation, mm -hmm. it's other preservation. Other uh -huh. Yeah, we think in certainly in terms of our mm -hmm. own self-preservation, mm -hmm. but we have to also think of others. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, very important. And I think if he was alive today, he would focus on the need for education, mm -hmm. the need to avoid too much of an emphasis on materialism, mm -hmm and the need to embrace spiritual and moral mm -hmm. values. Mm -hmm. Now, what about violence? I mean, what would Violence, I think that his message would be violence is always immoral. Mm -hmm. And I think he would say that on an interpersonal level, mm -hmm. violence is wrong. In intergroup relations, mm -hmm. violence is wrong. And in international relations, mm -hmm. violence is wrong. You can't create 
a culture of life and a mm -hmm. culture of peace through violence and human destruction. Mm -hmm. I think that would be his message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Baldwin, uh, Dr. King has had such a tremendous impact upon uh, not only uh, our generation, but upon other generations. And I think what you're uh, indicating now is that uh, that impact will probably continue mm -hmm. on into the 21st century, primarily because there's something that Dr. King stood for. Is that what we're saying? Yes, yes. We're saying that there is a certain timelessness mm -hmm. about his teachings and about the kinds of issues he raised. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the extent to which he will continue to live in our culture mm -hmm. Uh, will depend a lot on what we do in our churches and what we do in our schools. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, little attention is given to Dr. King in our schools and little attention is given to him in our churches. Mm. We wait until the third Monday in January okay. of each year mm -hmm. to celebrate him, when I think we should be talking about him uh, throughout the year mm -hmm. because the principles he raised are the issues he dealt with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what we should be about today. Mm -hmm in terms of, 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 of making uh, the quality of life better for people generally. Mm -hmm. Not just for the rich, mm -hmm. not just for those who have means and who have resources, but especially for what Dr. King called the least of these. Mm -hmm. And he constantly talked about the least of these. Well, I think you mentioned uh, the uh, celebration of the national holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you say uh, in reference to uh, that celebration? Do you think that uh, uh, that there's been a lull in reference to what has to be done and that there ought to be uh, a, a greater interest in this as a national holiday? I mean, how do you see that? I think that? it needs to be, we should not see it as simply a day off work, mm -hmm. a day to have uh, picnics, uh, whatever you want, uh, that kind of celebration. I think it's a time for us to get together in workshops and classrooms to talk about the issues that still divide us as a nation. Sure. Not merely race and economics mm -hmm. and violence and human destruction, but also politics. Mm -hmm. The nation, as you well know, is very divided now mm -hmm. between what some call the red states and others call the blue states, mm -hmm. uh, between what some call conservatives and others call liberals. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we are a very divided nation, and Dr. King always said that we can't achieve much that way. Mm -hmm. We also need to look at uh, these issues, church-state issues. Yeah. There's a lot of debate about that going on, about the religious right transcending the boundaries that separate church and state. Dr. King spoke to all these issues. The politics that divide us, the economics that divide us, the race and ethnic boundaries that divide us. And I think uh, he's relevant to all of these issues. So I think instead of holding parades and, 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 and picnics and, and just having days off work, we need to devote that day to some type of service mm -hmm. to other people mm -hmm. or learning about Dr. King or learning about how we can address the problems that are part of his unfinished crusade mm -hmm. uh, because his crusade is still unfinished. Mm -hmm. And so you think our, and, and, and our young people can still play a real role in terms of uh, Dr. King. They can uh, deal with some of the issues that they have to deal with today looking at his philosophy and whatnot. Is that yes, what yes. Thinking? Violence in our schools has reached epidemic proportions. Mm -hmm. And I think students can learn from Dr. King. We need to stop looking at Dr. King as some type of gentle, passive figure. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a radical. Who had a dream, yes. as you said, and, and I think that's yes. where most people will leave. Yeah, it. he was a radical. He was mm -hmm. a revolutionary mm -hmm. for his times, mm -hmm. and he's revolutionary for these times, mm -hmm. uh, because he was trying to show us a better and a different way mm -hmm. uh, of how to relate, mm -hmm. how, to, how to say no to violence, mm -hmm how to say no to economic injustice, how to say no to racial injustice, how to say no to religious bigotry and intolerance, all of these problems. So I think he's, he's quite relevant, and we need to stop seeing him as this uh, kind, gentle mm -hmm. preacher uh, mm -hmm. who led demonstrations and wouldn't fight back, mm -hmm. and we be, need to begin to see him as a radical, prophetic mm -hmm. figure who challenged us with a, with a prophetic gospel. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think uh, we put him in a in, in the mm -hmm. proper perspective when we do that. But would it be correct to say, uh, Dr. Baldwin, over the last minute that we have, that he was really assassinated, killed because of his dream rather than anything else? Exactly. That, he that what he saw 
could, right. as the possibilities of what could happen, people believe that he ought to be killed because of that. Yeah, because that, he was a threat. Had he been this kind, gentle, harmless figure nah, that a lot of us like to project, mm -hmm. then there would have been no need mm -hmm. for him to be assassinated. Mm -hmm. He was assassinated, assassinated because he was talking about a radical change, mm -hmm. a, a radical changes in the society. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to, we need to understand mm -hmm. that. Well, Dr. Ball, we've got about uh, 40 seconds before we end uh, this show for today. And I just want to thank you for bringing by that uh, excellent information and, in a real sense, updating uh, yeah. information in reference to what we've been doing or dealing with uh, on Dr. Martin Luther King. Because, Appreciate uh, it. He still, uh, as far as we're concerned, he still is one of those uh, great figures mm -hmm. of our century. He was exactly. great in the 20th century, and he will be undoubtedly great in the 21st, 21st century. century. I would imagine that, like Lincoln and Roosevelt and other individuals who will have a tremendous impact upon our society, he will always have that impact. Yes. And let me thank you and let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.